Good evening. Welcome to our last mass of the Novena in preparation for Christmas. A good number of us have persevered throughout the nine days while others have joined the big group once again after a certain interval. The Lord welcomes us all with fatherly love, even as we expect that we make a final effort to intensify our immediate preparation to welcome Jesus in our hearts and in our families. On this last day of the Novena, let us extend our concern and love to the immense family of mankind, especially those who find themselves immersed in the darkness of sufferings caused by war, natural disasters or sickness, or separation from their loved ones. Together with our personal needs, let us present to the Lord also the needs and aspiration of all people of goodwill. May his light and peace come to all mankind. Christ and the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit on this last day of our novena we thank the Lord for the many graces he has granted us and once again we ask for his mercy and forgiveness Lord Jesus you are the fulfillment of the Father's promise and of mankind's expectation Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to bring peace and justice of God's kingdom. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to reconcile us with the Father and with one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
quickly Lord Jesus do not delay we entrust ourselves to your love strengthen by your coming and raise us up you who live and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever amen our first reading is a proclamation from the second book of Samuel when the king David was settled in his place, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am, living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night, the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, Thus say the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went and I have destroyed all your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old. Since the time I first appointed judges over my people, Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that He established a house for you, and when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you sprung from the loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Please repeat. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Response. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. Response. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him and my covenant with him stands firm. Response, forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Zechariah, the father of John, filled with the Holy Spirit, prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. In this last day of our novena, Zechariah is inviting us to express our heartfelt gratitude to the Lord for accompanying us throughout this Novena Masses for our perseverance in attending it and for the joy and consolation it has given our hearts ready to welcome the Lord tomorrow on the last day. This Benedictus is equivalent to Mary's Magnificat. In the same way that Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, uh, Zechariah said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. Both of them expressed praise and expectation to the Lord for choosing them to play a role in the nativity of the Lord. This canticle of Zechariah is said to be part of the morning prayer. In the liturgy of the hours at the beginning of the day, we generally recite this canticle, thanking God for giving us our Redeemer Jesus Christ. We proclaim the fulfillment of God's promise by raising up the Savior to set us free from our enemies. So it says, He raised up for us a mighty Savior to save us from our enemies, to worship Him without fear all the days of our life. You know, to praise and to glorify God for His own sake because he is our God. We acknowledge Him as our Redeemer and we thank Him for who He is and not so much for what He has given us. Thus, it is a most fitting prayer of adoration and worship. And we do this every time we conduct a worship prayer. We direct our prayer to the Lord for His goodness, for His glory, and not so much for what He has given us. The second part of the prayer of Zechariah is to thank God for sending John the Baptist as the prophet who will proclaim the coming of the kingdom. In speaking about John, the canticle says, The tender compassion of our God is like the dawn from on high, who will shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Well, there is a similarity between um, 
Mary's Magnificat and uh, Zechariah's Benedictus because both of them are expressing gratitude. There is a difference in the way they express their gratitude. For the Blessed Mother, everything is well. Although she just expressed uh, questions of discernment, uh, and then there is the confusion of Joseph. But it's different with John, uh, with Zechariah. Zechariah was not spared from difficulties in life. But still, he continued to thank God. First of all, he and his wife Elizabeth waited for a long time to have a baby. You know that is an embarrassment. Having to deal with being childless because for the Jews, to be barren is a sign of punishment for past sins. And then Zechariah became mute when at first he did not believe. But in spite of the crisis, he met when he had the opportunity to speak, the very first word that came out from his lips is, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. The gratitude of Zechariah was tested by trials. He did not fail to acknowledge God's goodness in spite of the hardships that he endured. In our present time, uh, we are also undergoing a lot of crisis. Now, Zechariah is teaching us how to be grateful. If we examine our present crisis of the pandemic, all of us have our own struggles of struggle. Many of the people we know did not make it. They are not just numbers. They have names and they have faces. There are those who survived but went through a big debt because of hospital bill. So up to now, they are still seeking, seeking for means to pay. One of the survivors said, Hindi ko akalain na magbabayad ako ng malaking pera para sa oxygen na sa buong buhay ko, tinatanggap ko ito ng libre. Thus, the pandemic did not only affect health, but also the income of families and businesses. There are those who lost their jobs, and there are businesses that went bankrupt. Others have mental health problems because they were so affected emotionally. And of course, there are many other problems aside from COVID. So the question is, do we know how to be grateful to the Lord in spite of our trials? Zechariah is teaching us that God knows best. God sees all and He wants us to trust Him. The lesson is not what we do not have, but what we have to do with what we have. In the mind of God, difficult times have a purpose. It tells us to move on and not to surrender. If we cannot fly, run. If we cannot run, walk. If we cannot walk, crawl. But never give up. St. Paul said, It is when I am weak that I am strong. Not because he has the strength, but because his strength comes from the Lord. So everything in this life is passing and fleeting. Only God lasts forever. He never changes. He will always be there for us. So let us thank the Lord in spite of our trials. Come Lord Jesus, be our strength even in moments of difficulties.
As we are about to celebrate the birthday of the Lord, let us open our hearts in gratitude for this great gift and pray together. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, and fill with your blessings the entire church, the Holy Father, and all our religious leaders, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord, and give wisdom to our cultural and political leaders that they may lead our country to days of sincere cooperation and solidarity. We pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord, and bring your peace to nations at war, to groups that are divided by conflicts of interests, to families dismembered by jealousy and unfaithfulness. We pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Come, Lord, to our land and be the comfort of those who suffer or feel neglected, despised, or oppressed. We pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord, to our parish community and enable us to live this coming Christmas with the disposition of Mary Most Holy and Saint Joseph. We pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord, to our families and to each one of us and bring us forgiveness, your joy, your peace, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Let us pray in silence for our in personal intentions. We pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, we need you. You are our only hope. You are our only Savior. You are our everything. For you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Take and receive, O Lord, my liberty. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, to your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, to your goodness we have this wine to offer, for the divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. 
Graciously accept, O Lord, the gifts we offer, that our partaking of them may free us from sin and purify our hearts for the glorious coming of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. And Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we now sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. gives we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jew Paul that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
humbly we pray, partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Roberto our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Let us now express our gratitude to our Heavenly Father. In spite of the many trials we are undergoing in life, let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Oh, oh, oh.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Horatio Imperata Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 virus that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers, that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Our Lady Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Let us pray. You have renewed us, Lord, by these wonderful gifts. As we prepare for the misery of Christ's birth, grant that we may rejoice in His gifts of eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your head and pray for God's blessing. For nine days you have been preparing for the commemoration of the Lord's birth. May He reward you for your effort and fill you with His grace. Amen. May He remove from your hearts all fears and anxieties. Amen. May He confirm you in your faith and hope. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in your neighbor. Thanks be to God.
Oh